it was not a comfortable um, childhood uh, because, um, um, and I don't think it was uh, comfortable with my father and other families like um, our family uh, when they arrived to Eastern Washington because um, the, the communities over there, although there had been some Mexican presence in, in eastern Washington during the 20s, the, the, the depression stalls all of that. And actually, uh, people are, are, are repatriated back. We now know that people are, are repatriated back to Mexico, not only in Los Angeles, El Paso, and places like Chicago, but they're repatriated also from Idaho uh, and from Washington State. People from Tacoma, for example, are sent back to Mexico during the depression. But that's a different story. So uh, the communities don't really develop. And, and then, and then um, the Bracero program from 1942 until 1942, the agricultural component, um, um, also prevents, from, prevents the community from sort of developing. So when, when my parents arrive, uh, they are, like many others, they're really the genesis of the communities over there. So in, in other words, they are, they, are, uh, they are the families that that um, that uh, architect these communities, uh, because uh, uh, because there is no community. Uh, so uh, in in my own interviews, I, I always ask, well, what is it that 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 made you decide to stay? I mean, being so far away, and and it's always a you know get the you get these different responses, but what one thing you don't hear is that uh, I loved it here because uh, I, I felt a, a sense of of uh, uh, of belonging uh, as a Mexican person, none of that. It's a very alien world, uh, and, I, and I think they were unprepared uh, for uh, the experiences that uh, they encountered in, in Eastern Washington as much as the community was unprepared for the families that were arriving. Because during the Bracero program, it's, all, it's an all-male labor force. But you can just imagine the, the social complications for local communities when entire families are arriving with children and and uh, and uh, the, the the social problems that that poses, uh, but um, the um, um, the um, the experiences that I faced uh, were uh, es essentially um, um, alienation, um, um, no no real incentive to do well. Um, understand that um, uh, that, and, and you you sort of have to forget everything you understand about Eastern Washington today, and and place yourself in, in the in the in the forties, the fifties, sixties, and seventies. Um, these are very they're very confined communities. Largely, uh, they're, they're, uh, the community's economy it's 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 body politic, its, its social fabric is all wrapped around agriculture. Uh, so it, it's, it's a community of one mind. And there's, no, there's very little deviation. There's no diversity. Uh, so coming, um, uh, coming uh, the, my family coming from, from the Southwest being of Mexican descent, uh, we just didn't fit into to these communities. And so it, 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 was, a, it was a struggle. Uh, all through high school, uh, there was no expectation that that people, even among uh, white students, that, that that people were going to go on to colleges and universities. Because very few, even among the Caucasian community, very few aspire to the University of Washington, WSU, and so forth. It's not. It was not expected. These are these are communities where the schools are not of high quality, uh, and um, it's not expected that a great number are going to succeed.